Rockies win their sixth straight series, uh, defeating the Texas Rangers two out of three in a, a pretty weird series where there was a rain out Friday and Saturday leading to a doubleheader Sunday and then a another game Monday. Luckily, Texas and the Yankees both had off, so it worked out. So the Yankees had an afternoon Monday game, a rare one. And in this series, uh, what has been mainly the case for the Yankees this year, uh, in my opinion, has been excellent pitching and and a pretty quiet offense. Now, if you look at the, you know, stats among baseball, the Yankees have definitely, uh, you know, they have had their moments where the offense has been clicking. But in this series, the pitching was phenomenal and the offense was dreadful as the Yankees only scored five runs. They scored twice in the first game, twice in the second, and then one in the third. But was good enough for a victory thanks to Nestor Cortez. Really, for me, and again, there is recency in the fact that, you know, on the day of of recording, Nesta Cortez, you know, has a no hitter through seven, seven and a third uh, innings. He ends up going. He loses the no hitter with five outs to go. But it, you know, it was a tie game at the time. It was scoreless. So the feeling for me was a little bit dulled by the fact that you know this game might go to extra innings. So Nesta Cortez, uh, he ends up throwing over a hundred pitches um, and gets eleven strikeouts. Just an amazing performance by Nesta Cortez, and what a story it has been. I, I brought it up before, but just the fact that. This was this is in essence his third his third time on the Yanks, where he was on the Yankees. Then the, the Orioles picked him up, uh, you know, via the Rule Five draft. He was on the Ro- Orioles for a brief amount of time. I guess that must have been in 2018. The Yankees get him back, and Cortez uh, is on the Yanks for the 2019 season. And I just want to confirm that Cortez. Yes, 2018, he was on the Orioles. He's on the Yanks in 2019 and, and was a contributor. If you remember, in 19, he basically was part of the, you know, Chad Green for, you know, as an, as the opener. And then Cortez was the bulk guy. David Hale was involved in this, but it was really Cortez, you know, he, he pitched a lot of like the second, third inning, fourth inning, and it worked for a while. It did. And then it and then it really he fizzled out by the end of the year where he gave up a lot of home runs. It just it wasn't working anymore. Long story short, he ends up on the Mariners in 2020, uh, the shortened season, and that was a failure. And somehow he lands back on with the Yankees in 2021. Really, and, and like I said, kind of for a third time. I think it's considered a third time, even though he was basically given back to the Yankees by the Orioles. Um, and so Cortez. Starts the year in AAA, and then we saw what he did last year when he got called up. I guess it must have been like, you know, maybe late May where Cortez gets called up. Maybe it might have even been June, and he's carried that into the season. Just a, an amazing story for, for Nesta Cortez Jr. But as far as the series goes, the Yankees, they win their sixth straight series, and, that, and that's the good thing. Uh, I, the offense was really, really cold. Uh, not a whole lot to speak of there, but the pitching was, again, phenomenal. And in game one... It was uh, Garrett Cole who, you know, we shouldn't really forget about that. Garrett Cole, six and thirds innings, five hits, one run, a walk in 10 strikeouts. So he also was fantastic. Uh, But funny enough, Cole and Cortez both don't get the win. Cole, you know, was in line for the win in his last batter of the game was a home run allowed to uh, Cole Calhoun. And it was interesting. Uh, They really did push it with Cole starting him in the seventh when his pitch count was already pretty high. And you kind of understand the Yankees have a lot of games coming up. So in some ways, you know, you hope for health with these starters. But if you can lessen the bullpen, that that can be beneficial. But anyway, you know, Cole pitch is amazing. And in this first game, they go back to Hicks bat and leadoff, which I just don't really agree with. So Hicks bat and leadoff in both games. I don't love that idea. I'd stop with that and let Hicks go back to like six or something like that. But Hicks would bat leadoff. There'd be no Donaldson in the lineup for the first game. There would be no... Uh, Connor Falefa as Marlon Gonzalez was at short. Uh, also of note, Tim Locastro placed on the IL. I think it's a back thing, back issue. I don't think it'll be on that long, but I also don't think it'll just be the minimum 10. Uh, and so Florial was the 27th man. He would start the second game. So, the, I mean, no Locastro, that is a bit of a loss, I will say. So now you have a three-man bench of the backup catcher, Marlon Gonzalez, and whoever doesn't play, you know, as far as rest roulette goes. So, um, but... Yeah, Yankees offense really does nothing. Cole does a really good job for a while. Uh, Yankees with some failed opportunities. Uh, Higgy would catch Cole, which is interesting because Trevino had caught Cole recently. And let's just go straight to the bottom of the six where the Yanks 
do take the lead. Uh, it would be an Aaron Judge single, then an Anthony Rizzo single, moving Judge over to third. And at first and third no out, you get a sack fly by Giancarlo Stanton, giving the Yanks a one nothing lead. Uh, then in the seventh, uh, Cole, whose pitch count was, I, I believe, already above 100. I think it was maybe uh, about 105. Strikes at Mitch Garver, then Cole Calhoun homers off of uh, off of Cole, and that's the stand of the day for Garrett Cole. Jonathan Loisier comes in, gets a couple of outs, and then in the eighth, he you know he, he ends up going five up, five down. Jonathan Loisier, so that's a really good job for him. Is him bouncing back would be big, and, and and he's been showing some signs lately. We head to the top of the ninth where Clay Holmes uh, get, gets a couple of strikeouts. Then there's a double to Mitch Garver, but then he does get. Um, Cole Calhoun to ground out. So we head to the bottom of the ninth, and it would be uh, the lefty on for Texas uh, by the name of John King. And on a 3-1 pitch, Glaber Torres deposits it to right field for a home run, a walk-off homer for Torres, his fourth homer of the year. He is the walk-off king. You know, I have my problems with Glaber Torres, but he is pretty darn clutch. Uh, and he has had, you know, dramatic hits and – and home runs in some cases, and it's a home run here. Uh, so the Yankees win it 2-1. to one. Uh, Not pretty, but at least they didn't have to go extra innings, and they win the first game of the doubleheader. And after the game, Chris Woodward was bitching about, you know, that it's uh, – um, that Claiborne Torres' home run was – would have not been a home run in 99% of parks, which is not true. Uh, I believe the stat was in 26 out of 30 ballparks that would have been a home run, where it's kind of funny, uh, Cole Calhoun – uh, his home run wasn't exactly a deep one either uh, off of Garrett Cole. And then in the next game, Eli White, it's one that would have only been a home run in two out of 30 parks, Yankee Stadium and Minute Maid, uh, where the Astros play. So a bit of a weak comment by Chris Wilber, you know, at least get it right. Uh, and then your own guy benefits from it dramatically uh, in helping you win this, the, the second game. So speaking of the second game of the doubleheader, it would be Jordan Montgomery, on the mound against former Yankee prospect Glenn Otto, who's been pitching pretty well for Texas, uh, and he was involved in the Joey Gallo trade. So the Joey Gallo trade, um, where the, the Yankees also acquired Joely Rodriguez and traded him to the Mets for Miguel Castro, and Castro's been good as a Yank. So th there's a lot of pieces, and there's more than just well, the Glenn Otto. But Glenn Otto pitched pretty well against the Yanks. He wasn't dominant. He only had two strikeouts in five innings, but he only made one mistake, which was the John Carlos Stanton. And again, Jordan Montgomery, it's the same old story where he pitches well, but just doesn't get the run support. And it's always kind of a, a, a matter of when do you take Montgomery out? I know Montgomery gets annoyed that he gets taken out too soon, but in some ways I kind of agree with it when it happens because I feel like Montgomery uh, begins to falter just ever so slightly, but I wish he got some run support, but we'll get there. Uh, in the second game, Hicks pass lead off again. It would be no DJ LeMahieu in the lineup. Uh, it would be no Joey Gallo. Um, Gallo would eventually pinch it. LeMayu would eventually pinch it. Like I said, Florial would be in center. Um, Judge DHs, you get Stanton in right field. Um, but the Yanks would take a 2 nothing lead in the third. Uh, a leadoff walk by Hicks. Eventually, he moves over to third with two outs. And John Carl Stanton, it's a very impressive mammoth two on homer to give the Yanks a 2 nothing lead, one in which they would relinquish um, as Eli White, uh, who really kind of was a thorn in the Yankee side in this series, uh, who's a – Eli White is not someone who really should be hurting the Yankees, but he hits a home run, uh, one that would have only been a home run in two out of 30 stadiums, Chris Woodward, but uh, it, it makes it two to one. They for, Here's the thing that confuses me. Montgomery starts the seventh with King warming up. Now, Michael King finally um, doesn't come through which was bound to happen at some point. But Jonah Heim gets a leadoff double, and they take out Montgomery. Just start King. If Montgomery's on kind of a batter-by-batter batter situation, then, then what are we doing here? Like, you know, I, I think King should have started that inning and eventually come back comes back to hurt, where King almost gets out of it. It ends up being first and third, two out. Brad Miller is up. And on the first pitch, it's a wild pitch. Trevino can't keep it in front of him. It wasn't Trevino's fault. It was a wild pitch by Michael King. Heim scores. And so it is now 2-2 with a runner on second and two out. And on the next pitch, Brad Miller hits what would be the game-winning home run. A two-run shot for Brad Miller. Gives Texas a 4-2 lead. And at the bottom of the seventh, the Yankees would have a chance. Uh, with one out, kind of level walks. Then Marlon Gonzalez strikes out. Not a great at-bat by Marlon Gonzalez uh, there. Neither was the leadoff at-bat by Labor Torres. I felt like Matt Moore was all over the place. He really could have walked all of those guys. 
eventually uh, Tr- Trevino gets a bloop single to make it first and third, and then Aaron Hicks walks. So Moore was all over the place. They take Moore out, bases loaded two out. Uh, Santana comes in to face Judge on a 1 0 count. Judge, it's a pretty good pitch hit and flies out. So Judge doesn't come through. The Yankees still trail by two. Wandy Peralta would come on um, during the eighth. King gets one out, gives up a single. So, you know, King, not a great game for him. He was, you know, he had been amazing. So, you know, you, you certainly forgive him. And Peralta pitches a scoreless eighth and ninth. We head to the ninth, and the Rangers bring on their closer, Joe Barlow. Gleyber Torres walks, then Connor Falafel, who's been sh- scuffling lately, uh, does strike out on, on ball four. He swung at ball four. Uh, and then Joey Gallo pinch hits for Marlon Gonzalez. Personally, I, I, I'm not surprised they did it, but, you know, you don't have to. I guess they, they were open for the home run, and instead Gallo flies out. And then LeMahieu pinch hits for Trevino. He lines out the center, and that's your ball game. So it's a split of the doubleheader. Um, and the Yankees lose that one 4-2, so we head to the last game. And this is really the Nestor Cortez story. Nestor Cortez, uh, just amazing what he has done. Where in his poor starts against Toronto, he goes four innings, gives up two runs. I'll take that. If that's going to be with the worst of it, then it's fine. So Cortez, you know, his ERA in the season is now one for one. It's just, it's really incredible stuff. Like, and, he, and he's getting strikeouts. He has 42 strikeouts in 32 innings, a whip of less than one. It's just, these are all-star type numbers. Now, will he keep this up? Who knows? But, like, he has turned a quarter. And as to Cortez, he's here to stay. Um, and so the Yanks, um, the offense was not great at all. Um, and, and I really – I want to jump to – well, I, I guess the fifth, to be fair. Uh, John Gray, the pitcher for the Texas Rangers, eventually he, – he leaves the game with some sort of injury. And so the Rangers bring on lefty Brock Burke, who's had a really good season – what happens is it's bases loaded one out for Aaron Judge, and Judge was frustrated, I get it, uh, with some low strikes. Um, eventually, in that at bat, he strikes out. And then Anthony Rizzo, who had been struggling in a major, major way, Anthony Rizzo, uh, you know, really, he he's shown that he can be streaky. And Rizzo strikes out looking, so it stays scoreless. We head to the seventh, and Cortez's pitch count's going up and up. And there's a couple of walks, there's one out, and he's able to rebound. He strikes out Ibanez. Calhoun grounds out, and so it's scoreless going into the eighth. And Cortez, and, and I'm I'm happy that Boone did this with no hesitation. Uh, Cortez is back out there. He strikes out Culberson, so he's five outs away in theory from a no hitter if the Yankees were to get a run, which they eventually did. Uh, Eli White, though, like I said, uh, a thorn on the Yankees side of the series, he breaks up the no hitter, uh, and so Cortez, of course, is out of the game at that point. He had thrown 103 pitches which is way more than Cortez is normally thrown. So hopefully he's okay coming out of this. He said it felt like he got, I think he said like he got hit by a truck or something. So it's a lot for him. I think he'll be fine. And I'm glad that the Yankees tried to get him that no hitter. Anyway, Clay Holmes, who has been for me, the best reliever for the Yankees out of everyone. Uh, he gets a very quick double play of Simeon. And so we go scoreless to the bottom of the eighth. Uh, lefty Brett Martin comes in and with one out judge singles. And then, Anthony Rizzo, uh, who, who had been struggling, gets an RBI double, scores Judge, and the Yankees take a one nothing lead. Aroldis Chapman comes on for the ninth. Got a little bit interesting. Uh, as with two outs, Heim singles, Brad Miller pinch runs and still second, and then Nick Solak does fly out to fairly deep left. Gallo's able to make the catch, and the Yankees get the shutout, one nothing. And like I said, a very, very low-scoring three-game set, a weird one. All the way around with the rainouts, double header, Monday afternoon game. It was a strange one, but the Yankees walk out of there with the sweep. Uh, what was interesting looking ahead to this two game Blue Jay set uh, is the fact that Luis Severino got pushed back, I guess, with, uh, you know, where he really should have pitched. Uh, when it was all said and done, you would have thought he would have pitched on Sunday. Originally, he was supposed to pitch on Saturday. And maybe it's a matchup thing. Maybe they rather the righties versus Toronto. That's very much a possibility and would make sense. So uh, it's Severino versus Kikuchi, who again, uh, you know, uh, for game one. And I, I, I like that matchup for the Yankees. I really think that the Yankees should get to Kikuchi after they did not last outing. I still hope they do. And then game two is a little bit more challenging. Uh, as it will be uh, Barrios, who's had his struggles this year, but pitched pretty well against the Yankees the first time around, against Jamison Tyone, who he has pitched pretty well against the Blue Jays. So uh, this is an interesting two-game set. This will be the ninth game the Yankees have already played against Toronto, so they're basically halfway done with Toronto. 
and we're not even 20% into the season. Uh, pretty, it's weird how the scheduling works, but for the Yanks, for me, um, obviously you do not want to lose both. Um, sweeping, the, you know, getting the two-game win would be amazing, but a split for me is fine. With the way with where the Yankees are at right now, they're four games up on the loss side of Toronto. If you get the split, I can easily live with that. It's at home, so I would be very, very upset if you lose both and, and thrilled if you win both, but completely understandable. If you come out of there with the split, uh, and you sort of can keep, let's just say, the undefeated series streak alive. That's absolutely fine. But with the way the Yankees are playing and pitching, you know, certainly winning both games is within reason. So, again, the Yankees continue to win. Uh, and let's just hope that the bats can sort of get going in what will be a, in a very important uh, another series with the Toronto Blue Jays before the Yankees will then head to Chicago for a four-game set with the White Sox.